Awesome. Thank you. Good morning. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Mindful Monday. It's a beautiful, overcast, little windy day out there. And I found myself watching golf this weekend. I don't know, many of you probably appreciate golf more than I do, but we had some friends over and they were all watching the PGA Championship and Phil Mickelson, many of you probably know, won. And so um, I found myself having to uh, create some meaning around it just to keep me my interest because I tend to be more um, interested in uh, collaboration over competition, but you know, chasing a ball around a huge, beautiful golf course um, for some people is really exciting. So um, I decided to try to find some meaning in it. And I noticed that Phil Mickelson, before he would take a shot, he did some breathing exercises. Sometimes he would close his eyes and look like he was going into a meditative sort of state. And I thought, Phil is a yogi. So I actually looked it up and he, um, yeah, he did practice some breathing and some yogi-esque uh, <laughs> um, practices to prepare for his excellent golf game. So yay, Phil, he's one of us. So <laughs> in celebration of his big win yesterday, let's find a comfortable seat and let's practice in solidarity with all the golfers out there. So I like to prop myself up just to lift my hips up a little bit higher than my knees and find a little lift in your heart. If you can draw your shoulders up, back and down and notice where your chin is in space might need to be tucked in just a little bit. And imagine there's this, um, sort of line that runs from the pelvis all the way up to the crown of the head that just gives you that lift and it's lifting up to the heavens. So nice tall posture. And then I thought before we centered, we'd practice a little breathing. I'm wondering if Phil ever tried this. It's called alternate nostril breathing and it integrates the two sides of the brain. It really get us, gets us focused. So let's begin with a little alternate nostril breathing. And if you ever feel dizzy or uh, lightheaded as we're practicing this, just pause and just lengthen your breath. Come to a, a more of a natural extended breath. So if you're comfortable, allow your eyes to close. We'll use the thumb and the fourth finger. We'll take a breath into both nostrils as well as we can. Nice big deep breath. And then close off the right nostril with your thumb and exhale through your left nostril. Close off your left nostril with your fourth finger and exhale through your, I'm sorry, inhale. Okay, let's start again. <laughs> inhale, close off your right nostril. Exhale through your left nostril. Close off your left nostril. Inhale through your right. Exhale through your right. Inhale through your left. Close off your left nostril. Exhale through your right. This is it. Slow it down a little bit more. Inhale right. Exhale left. Inhale left. Exhale right. Inhale right. Close it off. Exhale left. Inhale left. Exhale right. This can also clear out the sinuses, so you might notice that. Continue, you're doing great. Let's take a few more.
Okay, one more each side. And as you're ready, just lower both hands. Let one hand hold the other, eyes closed. And just notice the benefits of that practice. Come back to a natural breath, maybe a little extended, a little longer on the inhalation, a little longer on your exhalation. And take a moment to scan the body, beginning with the feet, Drawing that awareness up the legs, through the pelvis, through that center line of the body. Drawing that awareness, noticing sensation. Drawing that awareness up through the heart center, pausing to notice the heartbeat. Up through the shoulders, down the arms, into the palms of the hands. up through the throat and up into our head space where we spend a lot of time. Good. And bringing that awareness back down into the heart, just take one hand, cover the heart and then cover the hand that's covering the heart. Let's take three breaths here. Acknowledging the meaning that we find in our lives. The significance of the small things and the big things, and the medium-sized things. And then when you're ready, blink open your eyes, shake out your wrists. Let's shake your right wrist, right and left. Let's shake your left wrist up and down, just as a reminder not to take ourselves too seriously, because this is ridiculously hard. Shake your left wrist, left and right, and your right wrist, up and down. Maybe I'm getting better at this. I don't know. Good. And then take your arms. Inhale, sweep them up. Look up. Let your palms touch and exhale them down. Bring your hands to your heart, chin to your chest. Let's do that again. Inhale, reach up, get long. Fingertips up toward the heavens and then exhale your hands. Palms in Anjali Mudra right down at your heart. One more. Inhale, reach up. Get really long and exhale, hands to heart center. Good, inhale, reach up. This time we're gonna lean over to one side, taking your arm over your ear and finding some length in the side body. Pressing down with the hip on the side where the arm is extended over your ear. Finding that seat, that connection to the earth beneath us. Good, inhale, reach up and look up. And exhale, take it to the other side. Finding that connection to the earth with the hip where the arm is extended, reaching up, fingertips, finding length in the body. Let's take one more to each side, just leaning. Good, reaching. Good, one more. Big inhale here as you get long. And as you exhale, reach up one last time, fingertips reaching toward the sky. And then extend your hands forward. Find the floor or your mat and just reach your fingers forward until you find some length here. Shine your heart so you're really getting um, that length in the spine. And then as you're ready, maybe walk your fingertips a little farther, stretching that lower back, finding um, that belly to spine uh, attention here, bringing that awareness to the core of the body as you reach forward. Maybe chin comes to chest. 
And then as you're ready, inhale, sweep up, reach up, and exhale, hands come to heart center. Good. Let's release our legs from their bondage. Give your ankles a nice little pat here. Pink them up. And let's take our hands behind us, fingertips pointing forward, and just lift your heels off the floor. Leaning back, sort of engaging the core as we do. And then lower your heels to the floor, lift your toes. See how high you can lift them. And then take your uh, toes to the left, your heels to the right. And take your toes to the right, your heels to the left. Good, come back to center, lower all 10 toes to the floor, feel that connection, and then lift your hips up, come into a tabletop, reverse tabletop. Good, nice big open, expansive heart and throat center, and then slowly lower down, and we'll come to our hands and knees, making a real tabletop, a real tabletop, a um, conventional, shall we say, tabletop. So knees come under hips, spread the fingers nice and wide, let the tops of the feet come to the floor and find your table, set yourself up, draw your belly into your spine, give it a little Sophie shake, let that spine begin to settle in here in this neutral position. Find a gaze that's just in front of your mat so you have an, a length in the, the back of the neck that really contributes to that length from the pelvis to the crown of the head. So you can really feel that long line of the body. And then we're going to get a little flexible here. So drop the belly, lift the gaze on your inhale, press the mat away. And on your exhale, round your spine. So go, go slowly until you find that you have a little more um, ability to go deeper in this cat cow, but move with your breath. So you know how long your breath needs to be this morning. So see what you can do with making meaning out of this, this shape of cow and this shape of cat by adding your breath to the movement. So the meaning is the union of the breath to the movement. And that is yoga. The secret to success, right? Finding that union of our breath and our body so that we are able to make good decisions and most excellent golf <laughs> play, <laughs> if that's what you enjoy. All right, let's take one more. So rounding into that Halloween cap, pressing your mat away, and then inhaling, coming into your Cow pose, shining your heart, drawing your shoulders back away from those ears. Good. Sophie, shake it out. Right to left. And then bring your knees wide as your mat. Bring your big toes to touch. Let's come into our first child's pose. And we'll soften here as best we can, extending the arms forward. And if the forehead won't quite reach the floor this morning, let your block or your blanket be a soft place to land and just settle in here for a few breaths you can extend your fingertips forward here as well and maybe lower your elbows to the floor and just rest as you breathe into that lower back into that middle back and finally into the lungs the upper back. Good. Take one more breath here. Just enjoying this stretch. And on your next inhalation, come on up. We'll come back up to tabletop. And if you're 
Um, knees are not padded. We'll be here for just one more uh, round here. So do tuck something under your knees. And when you're ready, inhale that left arm up to the sky. Follow it with your gaze and see what you can do to keep your hips kind of steady. As you exhale, thread your hand underneath that right and let your forehead come down to the mat. Inhale, reach up with your right arm, threading that needle. Good. You might want to take a half bind here, flipping your palm, taking it back behind you, somewhere in your lower back. Breathe in, breathe out. On your next inhalation, re-extend that right arm and exhale it down to the mat, pressing yourself up. Inhale, left arm up, reaching up, and exhale, lower it down. Good. So if you shake it out, press into the joints of the fingers, press into that little meaty part of the hand between your thumb and your forefinger. And then when you're ready, inhale, right arm lifts, exhale, thread it through. Right temple lowers to the mat, keeping those hips steady. On your inhale, lift that left arm up. Maybe take a half bind here if you feel like you've got some room in the shoulders here. Get that nice stretch in the upper back. Take a full breath in and a long breath out. And then inhale, reach up with your left arm. Exhale, press it into the mat. And inhale, reach up with right arm. And exhale, lower it down. Good. Good. Let's take one little stretch for our wrists before we come up into down dog. So turn your fingers so they're facing you or maybe just sideways, do what you can. And then we'll slide back just a little bit, just ever so slightly and get that stretch in the forearm and the wrist. Take a full breath if you can. It can be intense, so find your edge this morning. And then when you're ready, take your hands a little ahead of where they were in your tabletop. Tuck your toes, lift your hips, downward facing dog. So first dog, good morning hamstrings. So walk it out. Be tender with yourself where you need it. Take a little bend of each leg. And then as you're ready, press your heels back toward the floor. And find a moment of stillness in your down dog. Just notice where you are this morning, gazing back towards your knees. Good. Inhale, come up on your toes. Stretch your feet again. And then exhale. Take a walk to the front of your mat. We'll meet in our forward fold. Maybe roll your wrists out a few times. And bend your knees as much as you need to here. First forward fold. So let's... Let's be gentle here with our lower back. So you might want to reach your arms back behind you and give yourself a hug. Or you might want to reach for your elbows and come into ragdoll. Wherever you are in your forward fold, relax the back of the neck. Shake it yes and no. Just let it go. Good. Take one more breath here. Exhale it out. And then we're slowly going to come up through our halfway lift, bringing our hands to our shins, drawing those shoulders away. And then take your hands to your hips and slowly rise up, pressing your feet into the floor, finding that stable earth. Good. And then come on up into a mountain pose. Joining me in mountain pose, let your palms face forward. Let your Heart shine forward, tuck the chin, find that long line of the body rising up. Good, nice posture, maybe squeeze your shoulder blades a little more toward one another. And then lift and spread your toes and then lower each one down into the earth. Find that great connection to the earth. This might be challenging your balance. You can open one eye or you can open both eyes. And then we'll all open both eyes, gazing slightly, gazing slightly, not slightly, just gazing forward. <clears throat> just rock from side to side. Good. 
mountain pose, this firm foundation, this, this standing on the earth. Yeah, Phil Mickelson had to be very confident about his, his stance, right? So we're going to get a little funky here. We're going to start twisting from side to side. And then as you do, you can take your hands and give yourself a nice little pat on each hip, or maybe it comes back toward your kidneys. You can even make fists and give your kidneys a little love here. Just twisting from the waist. And maybe get your neck and shoulders into it. Moving from side to side, just create a little more mobility here. Keeping those feet firmly planted. Solid foundation here. Solid connection to the earth beneath you. We'll take a few more. You can go a little faster if you like. Good. Create your own rhythm. Let's take one more each side. And then come back into mountain pose. Bring your hands to heart center. Press your thumbs into your heart. And just feel the sensation. Feel your heartbeat. Feel your connection to the earth. The crown of the head reaching up. Connection to the heavens. This union. That is yoga. And when you're ready, shake all that out. Bend your knees. Let's bring our big toes to touch, our heels separated, so our, our legs will draw in together. And then come into your chair pose, so arms can come up, framing the ears. If your shoulders are um, going to accommodate that shape. If not, you might want to come into goddess pose. That'll give you a little more of an expansive heart space, you can squeeze your shoulder blades together, also known as cactus pose. But see if you can scoot down a little bit more, a little bit of a uh, engagement of the quadriceps, we notice that. Stretch for the calves. Take a big breath in and on your exhale, hands come back to heart center. We're going to twist over to the left, so this right elbow is going to Rest somewhere on the outside of the left thigh and then press your palms together. Draw them in towards your heart as you turn your gaze toward that left shoulder and enjoy this twist. So twist coming from the right side of the rib cage. Good. Big breath in. Slow breath out as you unwind and just take it to the other side while we're here. Let's Take it to the other side. So left elbow to the outside of the right quadricep, the right thigh. Good. Press those palms together. Draw your heart toward your palms, your palms toward your heart. Pressing equally into your legs as with your arms, gazing over that right shoulder. Take a breath in and a breath out. We're going to let it go, coming into our forward fold again. Release, maybe straighten your legs a little bit more. Relax the head, neck and shoulders. Good job. Inhale, come to your halfway lift. And exhale, take your hands to the floor. Step your right foot back and step your left foot back. Lift your hips downward facing dog. So that inverted V shape, press your heels down to the floor. So this is Dog number two. So decide if you want to lift one heel and then the other. And then eventually find your happy place. Maybe close your eyes for a moment and take a full breath in. And a nice long breath out. Good. Lengthen the spine so the tailbone reaching toward the heavens this time, the crown of the head reaching toward the earth. When you're ready, take your weight into your left leg, lift your right leg up, point your toes, and then take some circles with your right ankle, go in both directions. 
Good. When you're ready, bend your knee, draw it into your belly. Round your spine, draw your belly button into your spine. And then re-extend, send that leg long. Good. Inhale. And as you exhale, look forward. Step your leg all the way up to the front of your mat. So we're going to line up this right knee with this right ankle. And then we're going to take the left foot, spin it to flat so it's at an angle, and it's more to the left side of your mat. But there's this heel-to-heel -heel alignment with the, the right and left foot. So we're in warrior one now. Good. Reaching your arms up, take your torso in your hands and twist it forward. Good. It's a little bit awkward, so this left foot might be feeling, and the left uh, calf might be feeling some feels. So see what you can do to press the left side of the left foot down, keeping that right knee safely over that right ankle. Good. All right, here we are. We're going to take our palms and face them outward, bring them back and clasp them. By the way, a really good stretch for golfers. See if you can squeeze your shoulder blades together. Challenge your balance if you so desire by looking up. Take a big breath in. And on your exhalation, humble warrior, if you'd like to travel with me, the head comes below the heart, the arms lift overhead. So this is a balance challenge as well. So keep that firm foundation, feet firmly planted, all four sides of the feet, pressing into the earth, strong legs. Good job. Take a big breath in and a slow breath out as you release your hands. Take them down to frame this right foot. And then take your left foot, spin it forward, send it back, lower your left knee, lower the top of the left foot. Come on up. Let's enjoy this stretch. Anjani Asana, pressing your left hip flexor forward your left knee or your right knee might come a little bit forward of your right ankle it's okay here if it feels okay in your body take a nice big breath in shine your heart you can even take your hands behind you and shine a little bit more maybe smile good breathe in let it go and then bring your hands to frame your foot. Tuck your left foot under. Come on up. Lift that knee. Take your hands to the mat and step your right foot back. Come into your downward facing dog. Since we're counting our dogs, I guess this is dog number three. So lift your heels and lower your heels. Just notice the difference as we progress in our dogs. <laughs> as we progress with our dogs. Notice if you have a little more space in your hamstrings. Find some stillness. Good. Relax the back of the neck. Just a reminder. When you're ready, lift that left leg high. Point and flex a couple of times. Rotate that ankle. Good. And on your next breath in, Draw your knee into your nose, round your spine. Exhale. Inhale, send it back up. And exhale, send it forward. Come into your low lunge here. Fingertips framing the earth. Framing, oh my goodness, framing your left foot. Okay, we're going to take that right foot, spin it to flat. So right and left heels are somewhat lined up here and then we're going to rise up finding that warrior one you can take your hands to your hips and twist forward just encouraging that twist and then notice what's happening with the left knee see if you can track it over that left ankle and the right foot as flat as you can i know it wants to do funky things this is a funky funky little thing here this warrior one we're getting a twist. We're doing a, we're multitasking. Good. Reaching those arms up toward the sky. Fingertips reaching. 
And then take your palms, flip them. See if you can clasp them the funky way. Send your hands down your bootay. Maybe gaze up, challenge your balance, keeping your breath nice and steady. Breathe in. And as you exhale, bow, humble warrior. Taking your head below your heart, finding that balance. Okay, falling out. Just come back. Good, big breath in. Lift those arms a little higher, perhaps. Good. Slow breaths, one more breath in. And as you exhale, release your hands, frame the front foot, spin that back foot so it's facing in the same direction as the top, the lead foot, the left leg, and then lower the right knee to the ground, the right top of the foot to the ground, and come on up. Come into your Anjani Asana here, stretch that hip, that hip flexor on the right side as you lean slightly forward, but continue shining your heart. Continue smiling. Continue your slow breath. Finding that union of breath and body. Keeping that focus, that laser focus. That is our practice, right? The secret of our success. (laughs) The secret of our collaborative success. Good, take one more breath in. And a long breath out. Take your hands to frame the left foot. Let's tuck the right toes. Send the left foot back to meet the right. Downward facing dog here. Good. Find stillness in your dog. Find stillness in your dog. (laughs) Because you have got it. Good job. Take a big breath in. Long breath out. Then we're going to bring our hands to about the middle of the mat and then take your feet. Find the middle of the mat. Here we are, right in the middle of the mat. Good. We're going to slowly roll up. One vertebra at a time, one bicycle link at a time, one pearl at a time. Just come all the way up. The head is the last to come up. And then reach your arms up. Find length. Good. Ah, see what happens if you rise up on your toes, lifting your heels, just balancing on your toes. See how tall you can get. Can you reach the ceiling? If you have a ceiling fan (laughs) above you, be careful. That's rotating, I do. Good, see if you can balance here. Find that drishti, find that gazing point. Again, we're multitasking, we are, we are, Balancing, and we're also stretching our toes. Good, lower them down. Bring your hands to your heart. Close your eyes, just pause here. Good. So with your eyes closed, or one, one eye open, one eye closed, perhaps, hands at heart center, see if you can lift your toes. Good and then lower your toes. Find that stability, maybe shake it out. I'll face this direction. Good, so feet hip width. We're just gonna lift our uh, right foot, bring your weight into your left foot. Lift your right knee up about hip height. No biggie, just find this balance here. Looking forward at an object that's not moving using it as your focus. Good. Choice to stay here or reach down for this right ankle with your right hand and come into a quad stretch. So the knees can draw toward one another. Good. Find your drishti, find your edge with this stretch. Whatever you do, keep your breath steady and smooth. And again, if you fall out, come back. Let's take one more breath together. And then slowly release. Good. 
Maybe roll the ankles a couple of times. And then bring your feet hip width. Lift and spread your toes. Lower them down one at a time. Find that connection to the earth. Notice your posture. Shoulders back, chin tucked. Long line from center rising up. And the feet making that connection to the earth. And bring your weight into your right leg. Slowly lift your left knee up about hip height. Maybe hands are at heart center. Maybe you want to reach them up. Find what works for you so that you're getting your balance challenge and always the option to hold on to a wall or a chair. Good. If you like, reach for your left ankle with your left hand and come into that quad stretch. Maybe the right arm reaches up. Whatever you do, find your gaze, that steady, dependable object that's not moving. Good. So notice what happens when things get a little a little unsteady, a little challenging. You're seven under par and your teammate is slowly creeping up to meet you. I think there was there was a time when someone was six under and he was eight under under. It gets stressful. What do you do? Come to your breath. Breathing in and let go with this next breath and just come back to your center. Let's come into a dependable, steady mountain pose. Lift and spread your toes and slowly grip the earth with each toe. Bring your hands to heart center. Close your eyes. And pause here. Good. Feel the strength of your legs and the energy flowing throughout your body. Take a body scan and start with your feet. Bring your awareness through the legs, up through the pelvis, the belly, the heart, the shoulders, the arms through the neck and head. Imagine that energy drawing up through the crown. And then, as though it were a fountain, just extending outward all around you. When you're ready, blink open your eyes. Bring your feet a little bit wider, maybe as wide, maybe as Maybe, maybe wider, even wider, <laughs> and let your toes point forward. Let's come into star pose, reaching your arms up, taking up space, spreading those fingers nice and wide. Good. Taking those shoulder blades and drawing them toward one another, a little isometric engagement for the upper back. And then when you're ready, keeping this star pose, let's take the right arm over toward the left shin, reaching that left arm up, keeping those hips stable as we can, just as we did in our thread the needle earlier. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, let's keep that star pose. Take the left arm to the outside of the right shin. Lift that right arm up. Engaging those legs. Good, keeping those feet, all four sides, pressing into the earth. One more breath in, and as you exhale, both hands come to the earth, come to your halfway lift, so you're gazing slightly forward, fingertips on the earth, drawing the shoulders back. And then pressing into all four sides of the feet, come into a forward fold here. So hands come to the earth, and head lowers down. Good. And this is where, if headstand is in your practice, you might want to come into a headstand. We won't do that today. Don't worry. Have no fear. 
We're just finding meaning here. <laughs> We're making meaning. Okay, when you're ready, come up to your halfway left fingertips to the floor. Lift your gaze so it's slightly forward. And then we're going to take a walk toward the front of our mat. Spin both feet so they're facing forward. Take your hands to frame that foot that is forward. Mine was, it was the left for me. And then come into your plank pose or lower your knees down. Tops of the feet can come down. And then slowly as you can, make your way down to your mat and let your head come all the way down. And just find, take a moment to rest here, that third eye on the mat, making connection with the surface beneath you. Take a moment to notice your heartbeat here. And as you're ready, take your hands right outside your shoulders. Loop those shoulders back so you're nice and expansive. You're getting that engagement in the upper back and then as you're ready inhale come up into your cobra good we're going to hold it a little bit longer here so a little bit of strength in the arms some compression in the lower back so only come as high as you are ready and if you would like you can lift your hands off the mat so that creates a little more compression in the lower back so be kind to yourself, know, know where your limits are, and if you like, you can lift your tops of your feet off the floor. So what happens? Does the breath speed up a little bit? See if you can slow it down. We'll only be here for two more breaths. And staying in your cobra is completely fine or coming all the way down. Good. As you're ready, lower it down. Make a pillow, turn your head to one side, rock it out. Find some stillness here. Tune into your heartbeat. Tune into your breath. Good. So whichever way your head is turning, take the opposite leg and just draw the knee up to the shoulder. Release the lower back a little bit. Good. Take a full breath in and a long breath out. As you're ready, release that leg long and let the tops of the feet rest on the floor. And bring your forehead back to the center. We're going to go through that again, so be mindful of where your uh, preference is for this, this back bend. So take your hands right outside your shoulders, loop your shoulders so you're drawing your shoulder blades together. Press into the mat, come up to your cobra. This is perfectly gorgeous here. Keep that gaze steady so you have a nice long neck. And then decide if you want to lift your hands. You might lower down a little bit as you do. And decide if you want to lift your feet off the floor as well. Good. Any injuries to the lower back, just skip it. You can make your way into that sleeper pose in advance of the rest of us. Let's breathe in one more time. Maybe lift a little higher if you're loving this. And then exhale. Turn your head in the opposite direction, making a pillow. And then take that sleeper pose. So the mine is the right leg, draw it up to the right shoulder. Turning your head in the opposite direction. Good. Slow breaths in and out. Excellent. As you're ready, release that leg long. And then we're just going to turn over unceremoniously coming to our backs. And then you know it always feels really yummy to draw the knees into the chest. Take a moment here. And then take those circles, massage out that sacrum. This let's, let's soften everything we just did. Let's give that lower back a nice treat here. 
Excellent. So if you have a block, reach for it and bring your knees so they're facing the ceiling, heels draw up toward the hips. We're gonna come into a supported bridge or if you have no block, have no fear, we'll come into just a regular bridge. So if you have a block, press into your feet and tuck that block on whichever level feels good right underneath that sacrum and then take your shoulder blades and draw them toward one another. Another heart opener here. And this is fine, you can stay here you can lift it up to a higher level or come into your bridge, clasping your hands underneath you. If you're in your bridge you, without a block, you may want to come down a little sooner than the rest of us. But if you're in a supported bridge, you have the availability of a block, just enjoy the stretch. See, see if you can soften into it. Let your eyes close and let your breath be slow and full. <laughs> Sophie's on the other side of the room, just let out a big old sigh. I think those animals know they're already in union with their body and their breath. Let's take one more full breath in and as you're ready, slowly lower down. Take your left leg, wrap it around your right, just cross it over like you're just sitting and then press into your mat take your right foot to the right side of your mat just bump your hips over to the right and take your legs toward the left if you don't have a battery pack there good take your arms out to a t and turn your gaze to the right so this left leg is acting as a little bit of a um a weight to bring this right leg toward the floor good Twist it out, take one more breath, and then slowly lift it back up, lower that left leg to the floor, and then take your right leg, cross it over, lift it up, take your hips over to the left, and lower your, your legs toward the right. If you have a block handy, you can let, let your legs land right on that block, or maybe they come down a little farther. Open your arms out, turn your gaze to the left, Good. Breathe in. And breathe out. Nice. As you're ready, slowly rise back up to center. And I'm going to suggest for Shavasana, for one last heart opener, that you might take two blocks if you happen to have them. If not, again, no worries. Just come on down and set yourself up for your Shavasana. But if you have two blocks, put one um, on the lower level right at the shoulder blades and take the other one and place it underneath your head at the up, upper level. So you might have to scooch around a little bit to try to find your happy place. And then take your legs wide as your mat. You might take a blanket, cover up or place it over your belly. Let your arms come out wide. Take a big breath in and sigh out your mouth. Let it go. And you might want to take one more of those. Nice full breath. And then just release, let go. Just give yourself a couple of moments here to let your practice integrate. Bringing your body and your breath and your mind into synchronous union. It might be redundant, but just let it be.
This is from a book of poetry by Padraig Otoma called Readings from the Book of Exile. It's a poem called Narrative Theology Number One. And I said to him, are there answers to all of this? And he said, the answer is in a story and the story is being told. And I said, but there is so much pain. And she answered plainly, pain will happen. Then I said, will I ever find meaning? And they said, you will find meaning where you give meaning. The answer is in the story and the story isn't finished. Stay right where you are if you're super comfy or begin to deepen your breath and bring small movements to the body, wiggling fingers and toes, turning the head from side to side. And if you are so inclined, roll to one side, pause there, notice. Notice your entire body. And then using the strength of your arms, if you'd like to join me in a comfortable seat, come on up. Find that length one last time here in this practice. Length from tailbone to crown. Nice, expansive, open heart. Let your eyes close. And again, see if you can find that breath that's just a little bit slower than normal. Notice if it comes with more ease after this practice. You did that. Good job. When you're ready, reach your arms up for all the goodness. Draw your palms together. <clears throat> Let them rest right at your heart. Anjali Mudra, the Mudra of the angels. <clears throat> Take some of this goodness and share it. Thinking of someone or some place or a group that could use your, <clears throat> your good energy, your peace, your love. Thank you guys for showing up to your mat to practice, for making meaning, <laughs> for finding union. Namaste. Namaste.